include an executive session at the end of the meeting. Um, we have introduced the guests who are here. I think you recognize all of them. And uh, I'm calling with that, uh, I'm calling the meeting to order. So the first item on the agenda is the Planning Commission update from Sandy Levine. You're right on time. So Sandy, before you begin, uh, I have no idea whether I've signed that thing or not. I've signed so many damn things in the last month. If I haven't signed it, just let me know who to send it to and uh, I'll do it. Hi, Mary. Um, sure, I don't know if you've signed that or not. Um, hello, everybody. I thought we were on for 5.30, but maybe that's wrong. I don't know if other planning commission members are planning to join at 5.30. So is it possible for you to take up something else before or, or not? Uh, we can, we can. Thank you. Okay. Um, so the second item on the agenda is considering the appointment of Sarah Berger as Assistant Zoning Administration action likely. Is there a motion? I'll do that. Sorry. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay. Mary. Moved by Mary, seconded by Steve. Um, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Raise your hand. Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Congratulations, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Yes, yeah, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah is right. Okay, next next on the agenda, Middlesex Conservation Commission member George Longenecker to discuss issues RE boat launch at Wrightsville Reservoir and Shady Rill Park. Action possible. Are you ready to go a little early, George? Sure, I'm all I'm here. I'm all set. I've got the pictures I wanted to show you. Okay, perfect. Just do the share screen here. So, Winooski Natural Resources Conservation District with uh, Bowen Construction rebuilt Shady Rill Park over the summer. Oh. It looks great. So, here they move that road, the road that goes into the park over to the right. Then they brought in all this granite. Part of the delay in the construction was waiting for these materials to come. They brought in this granite. We'll come back to the outhouse, which was used for these stone steps down nice. to the river. Remember how it okay. used to be all eroded? So now people are directed down these stone steps so the kids can go to the river and play. And then the conservation district has since planted willows on either side of, of the of the paths going down. So yeah, it looks great. Be beautiful work. It, it's more than I expected. They've also blocked off that road. If you if you've been down there, it goes goes around back where people used to camp and kind of trash out the place. So that's that's now blocked off. And here's the uh, drainage ditch they built and they've since planted the willow saplings alongside this. And then if you look in the, the distance, that's where they've blocked that road off. So let's come back to the problem. The out oh, and they move the picnic shelter too. They <clears throat> construction people felt it was pretty dilapidated. It should be should have been replaced, but that wasn't part of the job. Nor was the outhouse. This was to make a pun in pretty crappy condition before. It said <laughs> something that the construction company brought in their own portalette, and since then the spruce tree has blown down on it. So the Conservation Commission feels that uh, both this park and, and the Russell boat launch have, have inadequate toilet facilities. And uh, we'd, we'd ask that they, uh, you take action as, as the Board of Health. The outhouse at Shady Rail is in, I think it's unusable, unsanitary. Uh, 
Wrightsville has nothing. Both, both of them are, are, are managed by the Agency of Natural Resources. Usually Fish and Wildlife uh, manages uh, fishing access areas. The boat launch isn't one of those. It's, it's, kind of, it's a park. And, so and Shady Road. Would be, we, would, we would go after the state and say that we are declaring it as a health violation and they need to fix it. Is that the process? That's what I'd think, yeah. And, and there are two choices. They could build it. At Shady Rill, they could build a solar composting outhouse. They have them at Groton, up at Green River Reservoir, or they could have outhouses like um, Marshfield Reservoir, Molly's Falls State Park, which is also a fishing access area. <clears throat> they put outhouse, two outhouses in there. So two, does, does, like the does that outhouse there. Have, a, have a tank underneath it, like a pit that you can pump, or is it just a... It, it's just a pit, I think, under there. It goes into a pit, which isn't the best for water quality either. But I mean, it doesn't have it doesn't have a, a concrete tank or anything under it, is what I'm saying. I don't think so. Okay. I'm not, well, I'm not sure how that how it works. I thought it I thought it did, but that's just. You might want to check it out, but we can't get in there now because the tree is blocking it. Unless someone gets in with a chainsaw, but it's uh, I think that that they're both health hazards. So the state has the state has no plans to do anything about either one of those. Not not that I know of. So I guess the question is, I don't know exactly what the process would be. I would think our health officer would need to go down there and do an inspection and then file a complaint. Um, Rob Penny went down with me to, to Shady Rill. We couldn't actually get in the outhouse. And uh, we went down to Wrightsville. Whoops. Sorry, I had a voice message come in here. Uh, I found toilet paper waste in the woods at, at Wrightsville. Well, that's been an ongoing. Yeah, it has for a long time. Right. Probably an outhouse is a, a portalette rather would be a better choice there. Maybe at Shady Rill because it's a park, permanent composting outhouse like state parks use. But in the interim, maybe a portalette. Do you know who put that portalette up at the Hunger Mountain Trailhead? Because I noticed that this summer. It um, wasn't us. That must be forests and parks. They've done that okay. at a couple of high use trailheads where there are residences nearby. They did it on, on one of the Camel's Hump trails in Huntington too. Okay. So you wouldn't have people peeing and pooping in the woods near residences. So they wouldn't be the same group to do something like that here? No, unfortunately, this isn't a state park, but it is ANR. But it's... Well, I, I, would, I would just suggest, unless somebody has a better idea, that we need to have our health officer inspect those, those two sites. And I don't know what the right word is, but basically, basically write them up and see what happens. I mean, I have to believe they have some kind of, I know they don't have, or at least to the best of our knowledge, they have no plans to do anything at the boat launch, but you would think having invested all that money at Shady Rail that they would have some kind of a plan. Yeah, a lot of that money. Plan in, the, in the design? No, it wasn't. The, the design was uh, erosion, self-mediation. No. But what, you're saying we should do something at both the beachhead and then the water, the um, boat launch. Is that what you're saying, George? At, at the boat launch and at Shady Rill Park, yeah. That's at what... Shady Rill Park or the Wrightsville Dam Park? Shady Rill. Shady Rill Shady Park Rill, is Mary. on Shady Rill Road. And, and then the Wrightsville Boat Launch, just south okay. of the Wrightsville Beach. The two and lakes. so A&R is the Shady Rill one. 
and is the fish and wildlife the boat launch or are they both oh, an they're both a and r they're oddballs but they they're so they're not under the commissioner of fish and wildlife no they're really not okay gotcha just may i say something yes I, I've had conversations with both uh, Robert Penny and with the, uh, who is our health officer and with our new fish and wildlife officer, who's just this fantastic young guy. And he has taken it upon himself. I don't know if you met with him, George, but he's taken it upon himself to kind of patrol the boat launch as well. And he's, he's concerned about this and came into our office and asked if our health officer would go visit these sites and site, and cite them. Uh, I think what George is saying is that the select board is actually the board of health. So right. if you wanted to, you could convene a meeting of the Board of Health and uh, meet with Robert Petty and issue a directive to the state of Vermont to clean it up. I think that just to make sure you guys understand what's going on. Robert's been involved in this. And, and Robert we, meaning Rob Penny? Yeah. Yeah, and, and yeah. Rob did, did go to both places with yeah. me. Then I went back to Wrightsville and found the crap. Okay. Just, just to be, just just be clear. Process, I would think he should Right. I mean, maybe he can just come and present it to the select board, but he should write up some kind of report, I would think. I don't know. Well, or you could help Rob write up a report. <laughs> I have to say that Rob has been an absolutely fantastic health officer. He is really taking, he has the manuals, he follows them to the letter. He's already dealt with a property in town. So it might be worth it just to call a quick meeting of, or the meeting of the Board of Health uh, at your next meeting, October 19th invite Rob, and then we could all just, you know, you could develop something that you wanted to send to the state. But well, we have an unbelievable amount of stuff on our agenda on the 19th. We have an unbelievable stuff amount on our agenda all the way to the end of the year. Okay, well, I, I agree. Let's have a short. Well, a yeah, short. And, and, and maybe somebody who supports the select board could help Rob with a draft of what we want to have happen. So conservation Sorry. is going to turn it over to you at this point. All we can do is advise you. Right. No, I'm saying well, maybe Sarah good. can help us prepare something. Right. Well, let's let's have the know. meeting and then let's have the meeting and then take it from there. I think it's yeah, pretty that straightforward. Would be yeah. You know, we need to we need to cite them. They need to come back to us with some kind of a some kind of a solution. I would think. So that makes sense to me if everybody agrees. Yeah. Thank you, George, for taking a look at that. That I'm I'm very familiar with that situation at the boat launch, and it's been a bad situation for a long time. Okay. So do we know, and I, I don't know if anyone knows, do we know what the state is gonna do with Shady Rill? Are they gonna keep the gate closed? Are they gonna have somebody open and close it? I, I don't know. You might wanna be in touch with the Wrightsville Conservation District who does the maintenance for them. You remember they tried to, the state tried to dump it on the town and get us to pay. Oh no, for. I remember. Now Wrightsville's main, doing the maintenance. Okay. Contracting to them. So, so I have so no idea. Probably Jane knows about that, right? Jane she Dudley? Should. Yeah, she should, because she's on the Wrightsville board. Yeah. Mitch, you wanted to say something? Yeah, I was going to offer if you guys would like me to, I can reach out to either Jane or Colin, who is executive director of the Right to the Beach, and get some feedback from them about the best way to approach things. Sounds and good. The, you know, the, the, the question, park. I guess, is just just knowing. I mean, are they going to have it open this fall? The, the gate's been periodically open and closed, from my observation, with no scheme or. I don't know if it's been open and closed so people could work in there or so it's whether it's open to the public or not or what the status is. Yeah, well, I know that. I'm sorry, Mitch. Um, no, Bowen Construction didn't want people in there when they were working. Sure, I get that. But is all the I was going to mention. Oh. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Mitch. That's right. I was just going to mention I know there was a post on Front Porch Forum announcing that the park was closed for repairs and the plans were that it would open in the fall. I will be happy to check and find out officially what their status is. And I can make a post on Front Porch Forum rather than reporting back to you guys if there's any development that the town folks would like to know about. Yeah, that'd be good. Sounds good. 
Okay. Thank you. Sure. Okay. Uh, Sandy, have you got, has anybody else showed up? I see. I, I know Mitch is here. I don't know if Theo's going to come. I do know that Phil and Elias said they would not be able to join. So I, I think it's probably fine for me to just go ahead and, and start with this. And I can fill Theo, Theo in if he's got, if he needs, if there's other other matters. And th this can be quick for, for the select board, but thank you very much again for taking the time and just to provide a quick update on what the Planning Commission is doing. I shared with you a link to a Google Doc that has um, just a quick outline of the status of the projects that we're working on and some of the materials involved. Um, key things for the select board to um, be aware of are we will have a Planning Commission public hearing on the Enhanced Energy Plan, which is an update to our town plan that will happen the end of October. And then once the Planning Commission adopts that, it will be handed off to the select board um, in line with the timeline so that it can be voted on um, by town meeting in, in the spring. And um, the next item is the zoning update. And we're working again with the Regional Planning Commission and we're on track to get most of that probably completed by the end of the year, early next year, and then go through and just make sure we do good public outreach and make sure people know what's involved and what, what, what is included in there. Um, Peter, that was, that's the contract and it needs, if you have it, it needs to be signed and get back to the Regional Planning Commission. I don't know between you and Sarah if you can do that. I can definitely I can definitely do it, but I need to know who I'm supposed to send it to. What email address? Okay, I I I can track that down and and send it to you. Uh, hey, that'd be great. I can do it. I can do it tonight or tomorrow morning. That's okay. Fine. Great. Thank you. Um, the um, walkable Middlesex uh, planning uh, uh, scoping study that we're working on. We the survey's been completed. We had I think. Um, 143 responses to that, which is a good, you know, a reasonable response to, to a survey just about thoughts on um, slowing traffic down, bike routes, sidewalks, and so on. Um, so we will be um, incorporating that into the study that Du Bois and King is, is working with us on. There's been some um, more, more in-depth uh, actual survey work of the, the right of the town. It's not the town right of way, it's actually the state right of way that's, that's route two. Um, the other piece is the, the grant for two overlooks and a trail on Camp Mead property. We talked about this at a recent um, select board meeting as well. Most of that work is done and it's, it, uh, right. we'll, they will finalize the, uh, well, most of the work on the grant is done. The actual work to build the overlooks is still gonna fall on um, the Camp Mead folks and they've got the materials lined up and ready to go as soon as they get their permits in place. But that, that should be happening in the, next, um, in the next few months. And that's you know pretty much all I have. I'm happy to answer any questions if folks have questions or thoughts about anything else that the Planning Commission is doing. Questions, anyone? Okay, thank you, Sandy, that's great. Okay. It, it is really useful to have you appear and do this from time to time. And I appreciate the, the link to that document as well. That's a help, thank Good. you. Thank you. Thanks, Sandy. Thanks. Okay. Uh, Treasurer's update, possible continued discussion of coronavirus relief fund, ARPA options, and Lafayette bill, action possible. Dorinda. Okay, let's start with the easy one, the Lafayette bill. <laughs> I'm still <laughs> holding that out. Standing invoice, and so I just need authorization from the board to pay it. Oh. Are we paying the whole thing, Victor? My my understanding. I talked to Shane today because I I followed up, and he said Victor had the update, but apparently they turned us down on our fifty fifty offer, 
and said that uh, <clears throat> they don't consider that they did anything wrong and that we need to pay the bill. Is that true, Vicar? Um, I guess uh, we weren't getting any answer back. Uh, Shane had called uh, the state Jim Coda. He wasn't. He wasn't uh, answering Shane. Uh, I uh, finally said uh, enough is enough. So I called uh, uh, Jim Coda and and talked to him. Um, obviously, no matter what happened, the state's not going to compensate us any money. He uh, he said that the mystery man uh, uh, nobody would uh, nobody would admit or didn't didn't own. A, I, I guess that's not a good word. No no one could remember uh, talking to anybody from uh, Jamie from Lafayette. Uh, he said that, uh, you know, he was, uh, he wouldn't have noticed it, but then when, when we went out and when he went out to uh, look at the sign, the, of course the lights were flashing, which was a violation of the, of the permit. And then it, the sign, the black and white 35 mile an hour sign, it's supposed to be uh, on there, uh, wasn't on there, but then he got to looking and noticed that the, uh, the uh, the sign was uh, back of the 35 mile an hour sign. So 35, our po our sign was in uh, in uh, the uh, 50 mile an hour sign. So I looked, <clears throat> we looked in. I looked into it, and then that um, I guess the uh, we voted on that at town meeting, and then uh, Paul was still here. Uh, and he voted, he, uh, he, he, I believe he went through, I don't know what, what he did. He's here tonight. Maybe he can say, um, but he got the permit. And uh, when we got the permit, uh, Jamie showed up and they went out there uh, with Shane and uh, th with the post we had, the embankment was too steep. So we couldn't, we couldn't put it in. So they moved it. Um, and then, of course, it wasn't okay to move that. So uh, the state came back out and uh, and met, and they rectified the situation. And uh, I talked, I called Lafayette, and and uh, the owner, uh, Brent, wasn't in this week, but Jamie, the guy had actually worked with it. I mean, he just said that you know there were things, you know, uh, everybody was involved in it, and uh, that. Uh, you know, he, he, he didn't say that he did what he does. He just assumed, or he took the role that we were working for Middlesex and Middlesex didn't, uh, didn't come back with anything, saying anything about it. And so, um, it actually, uh, is kind of a, is a, uh, as I said, a calamity of errors, uh, but the sign is finally in, it costs an extra 1500 if we had to put the material in or, or get more posts or something, we would probably have spent that amount of money anyways. I mean, if you need somebody to blame, you can blame me. Um, but I think, you know, it's just a calamity of errors and uh, I just think we should pay it. Well, the bottom line for me is it's just, it's just annoying that there isn't some kind of cost sharing available and everybody just says, well, it's all on the town. I agree, we could have done a better job. Uh, not that anybody deliberately did anything wrong, but they also could have done a better job. And for them just to say it's all on us irritates me, as I've said before. But the bottom line is, I say it's done. We better pay it. Uh, they're, probably, they're not, Peter. They're not. Them. Let me just finish, please. We probably no. need them more than they need us in the future. And uh, we need to put it behind us. So. What? Let me make it clear. They're not blaming, you know, they, Jamie said that there were mistakes made, you know, I mean, we could have done it better, but uh, we didn't, they're not blaming, uh, they're not blaming it all on us. It's uh, like I said, it was uh, uh, just the way the situation went. And uh, well, I'm, all I'm saying is when there's blame to go around, you should split the, 
you should split the pain. And to the extent they're not willing to split, it's annoying to me. So yeah. anyway, okay. yeah. I, unless anybody objects, I recommend we pay the bill and put it behind us. I agree. I agree. Yeah. <clears throat> For the record, that bill is $2,462, not $1,500. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Do we have to make a motion? No, I, don't think no, so. I just need, I was told to not pay it until it came to a resolution. So I've been holding this for quite a while now. Pay it, Dorinda. Woo. Okay. <laughs> It'll be, uh, certainly won't now. be this, it'll be two more weeks, but got it. Okay. Um, the other thing is, I know we've got somebody coming in to talk about the ARPA funds um, next meeting, but um, just as general information, there's been a lot of uh, discussion about how these other towns are using these funds and they're saying we need to think out of the box and anything we had to do or you have to do to make everything COVID compliant are all usable things under this money. Yeah. I've been having conversations. So technically, us Moving the um, Sarah's office upstairs to the second floor and new telephones because we don't have a phone up there. Those old things that would fall under this use. Right. The other thing, the other thing I would tell you that I have been trying to get to the bottom of with with no uh, with no success is. Uh, I talked to, and unfortunately, I can't remember the gentleman's name, who's the chairman of the of the CB Fiber Board, Phil. Can you help me? Yeah, Jeremy Hansen. Yes, Jeremy Hansen. And I said to him, I said, Jeremy, so if the town contributes money, and I'm not saying all the money, but the town contributes money, what what do we get in return? Do we get special rates for our income-challenged residents? Do we get, what do we get in return for our money? And he didn't have a good answer for me, no answer. And uh, then I said, so what happens if we don't contribute any money? He said, we're gonna build out Middlesex anyway. So <laughs> to me, <laughs> to me, that's saying, you know, maybe I know Worcester has, has voted to give them some of their money. I mean, maybe should we give, maybe we should give them some of the money, but we should darn sure explore other other needs of the town that could fit under this before we do it yes mary uh i talked to david healy preliminarily about whether we could use some of the money to set up a fund to provide access to low-income people to get the last mile hookup money so that our some of our low-income residents could actually afford to get on the internet once it's set up in Middlesex. And uh, I, I mean, I, I would say David is the representative from Callis on the CV Fiber board. And uh, I think he thinks it's something that we can do. So, you know, well, we got Jeremy, plenty of time. Jeremy certainly yeah. did not indicate that to me, but we're gonna have, uh, at our next meeting, we're gonna have Claire and I've asked uh, David, our representative to come to that meeting as well. So. I mean, we're, we're not, you know, nobody's, nobody's pressing us to deal with this. It's just concerning to me that we can't seem to get a straight answer. And, uh, you know, I think can, it's we say, just... can we say that our town hall is crumbling because of the COVID bugs crawling around in it? I don't know. No, her point is that the air quality is bad downstairs and that there's a reason like that. So she moves up to a space that's, you know, better. Is that right or not? No. Yes, sir. We had to we had to separate the office because we could not have two people working so closely during COVID down here. And we also needed to build the counter with a big plexiglass shield for people coming into town, which took the space of the recording station. So it has nothing to do with the radon. It has to do with that we had to modify everything, create two different offices for COVID. Yeah. But I mean, that's, uh, you know, 
can we can we potentially claim that yes but that's a relatively small amount in the big ebb and flow of things no, no, no. But I think it goes to more than that. It's like if we right now we have this whole system jerry rigged, we have we drilled holes in the floor so we could get a telephone up there. And, you know, you're also got the potential for four people working in the bookkeeping department, which still would all fall under the COVID thing. So there's we're just saying that that money can be used for anything like that that needs to be um, people need to be separated and you have to you know build out new spaces for them and things like that. So yeah. it was just something that we need to if we can't go into it saying we need to do building renovations, but if it's COVID related, it all would be covered under it. And it's a great opportunity to probably I mean, all those windows upstairs are failing. So it would be an ideal time to maybe consider replacing windows because you have to make it, you know, habitable for the people that are going to be working up there. Oh, I I agree hundred percent. I mean, whatever we can whatever we can get, we should we should go for and get. I mean, can we can we put in for a new lift? I don't know, you know. But I don't know. Have, my understanding is we're going to have roughly half a million dollars, right? Right. right. Yep. That'll pay for a lot of yep. stuff. Well, that's what I'm saying. So, but as you go, I just wanted to bring it up before you meet with this person because those are the questions that I think, you know, we should be addressing because I just saw a difference in like heating bills last year, the electric bills, because we were heating that spot upstairs with electric heat, you know? So there's all sorts of things like that. No, I don't, I don't, I don't disagree. And, you know, no matter what the future of that building is, having it in, having it in good repair is only gonna be our benefit if we sell it. If we demolish it, it won't be to our benefit, but if we sell it, it will. So, right. yes, but I want, I want to know, I want to know what's eligible and what's not eligible. And so far, I feel like we don't really know. We have a lot of thoughts. We've got a lot of information, but we don't really know. Well, that's what the right. So in answer to your question, Peter, I don't think there is really an exact answer as to if we gave $50,000, what would that mean? I think what it means is that overall, the cost of service is reduced the more money that they don't have to borrow oh, no, um, i understand that liz but is it everybody's you know what i'm what i'm thinking is the towns can, that contribute the money should have some benefit to their town not just saying thank you for your hundred thousand dollars the the rates across our whole network have reduced 50 cents a month per user or something that doesn't sound like much of a return for the money Yes, Mary. No, I'm just waving to somebody because I'm sitting in my car as somebody walked by. <laughs> okay, Mary. <laughs> I'm sitting at the WEC. I, my meeting ended uh, for Washington Electric Co-op. I'm sitting in the parking lot doing this meeting because it ended just two minutes before I got on. No, I got it. So, so Theo, unfortunately, we've already had our update from Sandy. I just saw that from her. Well, thank you all. And I'm sure it was excellent because she is a great leader. So we'll, we'll, we'll see you all later. You did a good job. Hi, uh, I bet you she did. Thanks, All Dale. right. Thank you all. Okay, Dorinda, back to you. That's Anything okay. Else? I think that pretty much... Um, I, uh, we do need one more signature on the orders. So either, um, I don't know, Phil, if you can swing by or if somebody else can swing by, we do need one more. Um, I can swing by, but it wouldn't be till later tomorrow, like four o'clock or so. Okay. I don't and know if I'm anybody else is around who could. I'm happy to just, drive on my way home and put my meeting on the phone and pop in before you guys leave. I can do that. I'm at work. 
however, I don't know. It Where doesn't matter. I mean, I've got your, like I said, I have your, I don't want somebody to make a special trip. So I have your uh, verbal right now so I can mail checks, but we really need a signature on the page. So whoever wants to okay. do it whenever they come by and it isn't going to hurt if we have four signatures. Okay. Yeah, because I can I can drive by on my way home from WEC, but um, at the end of this meeting. Well, whenever I don't know how late we'll be. I don't know if you open meeting. though. <laughs> that's right. Okay, that's the only other thing I had. Okay. Thank if we're going to keep doing this, can we get a copy of DocuSign so that we could do this remotely? I don't know if. We're I have to find out if we can use DocuSign. I don't know oh. if that's accepted. Ah, okay. Because read, the only I reason we could do it by the beginning of this process, that DocuSign was not okay, but they may have. Yeah, been. but it was a uh, um, the reason we were able to do it all by email previously was because there was a state of emergency. State of emergency. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But it, you also, I think back when you said you were going to do Zoom meetings, you were only going to do it until the 1st of November. So I don't know if that's going to change or not. So that's only one more meeting. Right. I think we need to, I think we need to hang in there doing what we're doing and see if we can't go back to in-person meetings somewhere here in the next couple of months. Well, you had, when you went to this, like I said, you had set November 1 as the day yeah. you were going to resume. Yeah, I remember. Thank you. And the numbers are a lot worse now than they were when we made the decision. <laughs> Don't this say last that. Month, this last month was the, the second worst month of yeah. the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. What did they decide? Are they coming back in November? No, they're going to tape. They're going to address it <laughs> in November. <laughs> they didn't say which the November. Line. <laughs> okay, that's it from me. Okay. What thank about you very hiring? Much. Sarah, what about hiring? How are we're we going to address we're we're have an executive, executive session. session there. Oh, okay, gotcha. We're going to have an executive session at the end of the meeting. Highway department update, Victor. Yeah. Um, the crew is over on uh, Baldock Road. Um, they're finishing that up. Uh, actually, tomorrow, I guess, um, um, Jay will uh, will do a grading on it, and then at some point, uh, we have a truck down, so when we get two trucks, we'll put top, we'll, we'll put uh, travel on uh, Bulldog Road, and, and Shane will either move to uh, Center Road and do that cross pipe by uh, Tim Lawson's down to the old, old place. Or uh, he'll go to, uh, or we'll go to uh, Center Road. Yeah, and we Steve, were thinking this is when we were going to do the culverts on Center Road, right? Uh, I'm sorry, but I didn't hear you. Oh, I'm sorry. I just said we were planning to do the culverts on Center Road right about now. Now, right around the first of October. Yeah, yeah. And we've, you know, we've had some some issues there with with uh, people being out. With that brought up, uh, one of, uh, those crossings down there, uh, I, don't, I don't know as we had it in the budget. I mean, we do have a paving fund, but I, as I thought, I, it was, uh, that money was gonna go to supplement the grant we got. Um, but uh, what does the select board feel about uh, uh, Paving in those areas where we uh, where we have to uh, dig the culverts up, there'll be uh, gravel, and that's about it. Um, but it will be a, probably be a fairly good cost. Um, where is that? It's on the center road between Steve's house, Steve Martin's house, and uh, and uh, the interstate. The culverts we have to take the culverts out, replace the culverts up through. I think there's five of them. And we'll be down. One of them uh, is down about eight feet. So with uh, we don't have a trench box, or nor could we uh, probably use one. Uh, so the uh, the the safety uh, slope will probably make that you know fairly wide. And uh, 
I don't, I don't know as uh, gravel will hold for the winter. I mean, I don't know. Uh, I don't know how Steve feels about it. I don't know how Mary feels about it. Uh, I know if we get into the winter and it's going to be hard to stabilize material in there if it's, uh, if it ruts up. I just have a question, Vic. You mean you're going to take the pavement off, right? You're going to replace the culvert, and then you're either saying, do we just leave it as dirt on top so you'll have pavement, dirt, pavement, and you think that might not hold up so well, or should we put some sort of pavement base over those replacements? Yeah, hire, hire a subcontractor, uh, Liz, and uh, come in and put put pavement in, and so that it. Uh, doesn't have a tendency to ravel out over the summer, oh, over the winter, I'm sorry. Yes, Dave. Uh, <clears throat> as far as that goes, um, and Vic would probably vouch the same thing. I, doing this over the years, uh, the gravel will definitely not hold up. The, the crew is gonna have to be doing something more than once throughout the winter because of, I mean, if it's not like a gravel road, it's just that patch and that's where it happens. I, I hate to spend the money, but I think we're going to have to spend the money and put a minimal patch in there. Yep. And the black that's stuff helpful. doesn't count that you put out, you know, they fill that stuff with the black. I don't know no. what it's called. Just, no. <laughs> Are you saying oh, I mean, the, thing that's, the thing that's too bad about this is Thing that's too bad about it is we're just going to rip that up in the spring right <laughs> so i mean uh, we should have we should have thought about this before or, or talked about it before we uh made a plan to go ahead and do this now i mean that makes me think we should we should wait and do it in the spring right before they do the pavement but i don't know if that works from a from a timing point of view how much how much do you think it will cost to put a couple of inches or whatever we need to do of pavement in those. I'm afraid the pavement's going to break up too, unless we uh, compact the living bejesus out of it. Well, I mean, Shane, uh, I mean, one thought is that, uh, you know, you could put some gravel in there and uh, um, some like ledge in there and really, really compact it. And it probably, you might only have to go down a little bit, but I kind of, uh, lean towards what Steve just expressed. Uh, I don't disagree with him. I, it's very hard to hold that in there in my experience. And once it ravels out, once it ravels, once it ravels out, it couldn't ravel right back up the road or right back up the, it won't necessarily stay in the channel that, uh, that we removed the pavement. Even right. I, I think, didn't Steve, didn't you say that uh, you could get Shane uh, one of those uh, pizza cutters there to cut that? Yeah, at one time I think I still got, I still, I think I still have access to that. I'll check yeah. that out. So what that means is he would that we would cut it straight across. It wouldn't. It would be a straight cut and not a rabble cut. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's up to you. I mean, I, I it was worth. I think it's worth asking and whether the what you want to do. How much? Do you hey, Vic. It's Paul over here. What's the cost? Yeah, Paul. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm just throwing my two cents out there. And even though selfishly, I've got to drive it twice a day, knowing the holes that we had created up on Shady Rill when we had to go down to some of those culverts that were further, more like 10 feet uh, below the road, they're going to have to create quite a hole. So, Vic, you could, you could ballpark that deeper one, but that's probably going to be 30 probably 30 feet, if not better across on that one. And, and I agree with those guys. I mean, I see what happens in Montpelier when they try and leave dirt. I mean, and it's, it's just atrocious. And, and I agree with Peter as much as I'd hate to rip that up in the spring. I, I think we're asking for a, a heck of a lot of complaints from residents uh, if, if we didn't pave that. And, and I don't think the guys are going to be happy going down there trying to patch that when they've got other stuff to probably be doing either. Yeah. Well, you're exactly right. I, I, I figured that it would be like that when it's down uh, eight feet, there'd be like 30 feet. Uh, I'm thinking yeah. if you got lucky. I think it'd be like 10,000 bucks, but I could be wrong. I didn't, I didn't know. I, I we can check into, uh, you know, uh, if we can get somebody to do it, uh, we, we, we would be better off to subcontract it out with somebody that actually does it rather than, I mean, we don't do that 
we don't do that kind of stuff uh, on, a, on a regular basis. Yep, I see Dorinda's hand up and I see a finger pointing. <laughs> Sarah, okay, um, I'll say this, it might be just a stupid idea or something, but we've always talked about just digging up all these paved roads and making them gravel. What if we just dig up all the pavement and leave it gravel for the winter and then we're all set to plant the new pavement on it in the spring? Well, I think and we save on salt here, here. <laughs> yeah. I mean, just an idea. <laughs> well, I think part of the process that we are, uh, that we are uh, uh, contracting for is to have that material uh, uh, mixed up and be part of our, uh, uh, be, you know, I don't think they're coal planting that off. I think they're bowmagging that. Could you talk English, Vic? Yeah, right. I don't understand it <laughs> either, <the> sir. <laughs> I don't, I don't think, I don't think they're going to remove the pavement next spring. It's not my, my understanding with the, with, with, with the contract that, that they put out. I think we're going to, we're going to grind that stuff up and mix it with the gravel, lay it back out and, and uh, compact it and then pave uh, uh, two courses of pavement over the top of it. So, so you're not really- any chance, Is there any chance we could do that, getting to Dorinda's idea, do that now and have it be a gravel road for the winter? Oh, uh, but, but when you do that, you're just gonna have a horrendous amount of potholes. Yeah. I mean, have you, you've driven down the interstate or down, uh, the different some roads in the state of Vermont when they when they do that and they lay it out and of course you have to put water on it and stuff and uh, it just makes potholes and they don't they don't uh, come out very easy it just makes them a mess to drive on. So did you answer? I'm sorry, did I miss the answer to Peter's question about whether or not it could be postponed to do this stuff in the spring so that it's well, a idea, short time frame? Excuse me. The idea of doing it this fall is that no matter how much you compact it, uh, the traffic over it this winter and this fall will do uh, more for the compaction. And uh, uh, the fear is that if you do it next uh, spring and then they just pave over it, you're gonna have a, you're gonna have a dip there forever. Because you- I don't understand. You won't get the compaction. You, just, you don't get the compaction, Liz. So as heavy uh, vehicles, as those 80,000 pound trucks drive over, you're going to have a divot in the road, right? In a brand new road. <laughs> so the theory is that you re that you remove or you replace your culverts like six months in advance of paving or something for that very reason. Yes, correct. correct. Uh, so, so Vic, just just trying to think about this. It was never clear to me how many dollars we were in the hole potentially with. The paving grant that we got plus the money in our in our fund. I I thought, and this is just my memory, we were still going to be like thirty or forty thousand dollars short on that project in the spring. Is that true? Well, the the cost was what three thirty one. I don't have that in front of me right now. And then we had one hundred and seventy five, and our and our paving grant has. Uh, uh, I mean, our paving fund has how much money in it, Dorinda? I'd have to go pull the paperwork. I can go look. I just, I'm just afraid that we're, we're short already and spending an extra $10,000 is just going to make us way short. But I could have, I could have the numbers wrong. That, my memory could be uh, faulty, but I had it in my head that we were, we were underwater already on the project. How big is the gap? Is it like the size of a car or is it like two car lengths? Well, 30 feet is two car lengths. Oh, it's 30, 30 feet. Okay. And that's five 30 feeters? No. 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 Yeah. Well, there's five culverts you're replacing. Yeah, Correct. but they're not all that deep, Mary. Well, what I don't I, understand. Well, I, I, you know, I, I, I feel like, I and I'm sorry to be, to be a stickler about this, but I, I want to know what the whole picture is before we make a decision on whether we're going to spend $10,000 to pave something we're going to rip up and i understand the road crew might not like having to go down there and with a half a truck load of gravel and smooth that out in the middle of winter but for ten thousand dollars i i mean that road is so horrendous now in the winter and dangerous 
you know, with those ruts that fill up with ice and water and everything else, a no. few more divots won't make that much difference, I don't think, but that's just me. We have 229,000 in the paving fund. So when you got 175 uh, grant? The grant was, um, yeah, something 25. like that. I'd have to go pull the grant book. And I think the total project was three something. 331, depending on what we do, you think? Yeah. So that tells me that we do have potentially have the $10,000 doing the math in my head. I mean, obviously, uh, I mean, we can we can figure it out this week and and get a, get quotes on what it would take to do that. Well, let's see. Let's see. A, if we can get somebody to do it, and B, get some idea of the real of the real cost. I, if you know, it makes a big difference to me if it's ten thousand dollars or twenty five thousand dollars. Yes, Dave. I have to throw something out there, uh, and I understand. Uh, what Vic is saying about uh, the compaction and, and doing it now and letting it set through the winter, which if you have that option, that is a great option. However, the town of Middlesex crew did the Shady Railroad and that was put in. The boys did an excellent job with compaction and we haven't had problems there. You don't necessarily have to have problems with uh, with compaction if it's done correctly. Unfortunately, the state of Vermont doesn't usually do the compaction when they're doing it, but most of the contractors do. So I'm saying that if we had to wait until spring instead of not spending $10,000, we should be able to do that and get the right compaction in there. Hmm. Uh, interesting, thanks. Well, let's get the, let's get the number, Victor. I mean, if we can't get anybody to do it, that makes it a moot point. And if it's right, right, more right. money, it makes it a moot point too. When is the, the plant's going to close down in another 30 days, right? Uh, it'll go into November. Yeah, okay. Depending, you know, depending on the weather. Yeah. I don't disagree with you, Steve, but we haven't had a good... Uh, uh, a good record of, uh, of getting that, that, that compaction. Yes, sir. I, it's, I had it's, my culvert it, replaced during that shady rural time, and I see those gigantic trucks going back and forth, and it's perfect. Yeah. It's really nice. Well, there's your we, answer, then. You, there's that, your answer. <laughs> they, uh, we, we rented, um, I'm pretty sure we rented a, a reversible, a large reversible plate to do most of that compaction on mm -hmm. those culverts. And, and you need something, a, a small plate compactor isn't going to do it. I mean, you have to start off on the bottom with something small, but you have to put in some smaller lifts and you have to have the right equipment. Right. Even if we rented it, it's still cheaper than paying $10,000 and paving. Why don't you make a motion to do that? And I'll go along with it. Oh, well, wait. <laughs> I thought we were going to get some more information. Well, we don't need it. Yep. We don't need any more information because we know with the timing. With the all timing, we got to do is get it. All we got to do is get it compacted. I mean, I, I you know, I'm you not trying to throw a monkey wrench into any of this. I just, uh, like you said, I our experience is more that, uh, you know, it's better. It's uh, it's hard to get that compaction, you know, right right before the paper comes down through. But hey, didn't you? Uh, didn't you? Didn't you guys put the uh, roadway? How'd you guys do that over there? Didn't you, didn't you put the, the gravel in and then dig the culverts after? No, we um, just let me jump in, Steve, and I'll jog everybody's oh. memory since I, I spent almost a month Go down, for it. down there. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so obviously jump, the, the jumping jack that we have now and the jumping jack we had, one in the same. Uh, we did rent a reversible plate compactor from Johnson Hardware, a, a big unit. And then I actually had a, a pretty good coworker that worked for EA Granfield, and and we you ended up uh, renting a roller from them that helped us out tremendously. Once we got into the bigger portions, Vic, then we ended up using the the roller um, to do those bigger portions because we we you know we were spending hours. But but we did 
three and four inch lifts the whole way up and and knock on wood we we got really good compaction but but really i was there the whole time and the catch would be those guys could not skimp on those lifts as as you know you know if you were to skimp on you know go six eight inches i think that's probably where we'd start seeing those you know that compaction after things were paved that's that's correct paul i agree with you 100 percent. well let's see what let's see what the story is uh for the time being they can i guess do we want them to go ahead and do the culverts or do we want them to wait Vic, my only question to you guys is, would, would you have time to do it in the spring? Because obviously right. that can be pretty time consuming. Would, would that end up interrupting the, the schedule of the pavers and, and the grant stuff? That, that would be my only unfortunate caveat to, to this and them doing it in the spring. Would they have time enough to do it? I think they're shooting for like June. And so we would have to do them in the month of May. And, you know, you know how busy you are after winter uh, grading. I do. I do. Yeah, and that's, you know, you essentially call the greater operator out of the crew, you know, for that month. So you're down to a three-man crew, you know, who's going to take time off and stuff. That, that's the only concern, and I hate to complicate this. That's, you know, you, you really lock yourself into that window. That's all. And the other thing, I guess, you know, we'll, so you want, you want us to find out what that paving would cost and then. Uh, well, and if it's possible to do it. I, yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Which is yeah, limited. Yeah, yeah. Is at this time of year, those guys are all behind the eight ball, and they're frantically trying to get their projects done before the asphalt plant closes down. So, if we can't get anybody to do it, then it's a moot point. <laughs> and and the other thing, at the same point, we can have a discussion with uh, you know I can have a discussion with Shane and you know get a commitment there to uh, you know do like Paul said you know. Uh, but if we don't hire somebody, we're going to be down to uh, we're going to then be down to three guys. And uh, anyways, so I mean, at least uh, for another month, we got three guys. Bruce isn't leaving until the twenty eighth of October. So. Yeah. Uh, speaking of which, is there going to be a retirement celebration for him? We should definitely do something for him. Um. You know, just maybe a little open house at the. We did that once when one of, one of the guys was retiring. You know, just stop in and thank him. I think we need to do it. Yeah, we do. There were a lot of enthusiasm for it, but I think we do. I too. Need to do it too. I'm just trying to think who was the one we had it for before. I can't remember. I just remember going to one. Buster, wasn't it? It was yeah. Buster. That's yeah, what, I thought it was. Buster. So if it, it's his last day, the 28th, is that right, Vic? That's what they said. That's what uh, Shane told me uh, Monday. Yeah. Okay, so that's a Thursday. And, you know, if Shane's, um, you know, we could either do something where we come at the end of the day or come in that's with coffee last, or something. That's our last 10-hour day. That's uh, our... The 28th will be our last 10 hour day, I believe. But you're done around six, right? Uh, no, no earlier. 4.30. I think this is ridiculous. Huh? No, they get, they get done at 4.30. They start early in the morning. Oh. I, I think that, I mean, for me, I'd rather go there first thing in the morning, but I know that's going to get resistance from, uh, from other folks. You bet. Well, <laughs> I think we should go, we should have something right at 4.30. You know, right. even if COVID is bad, we, you know, can have the doors open and at least give our regards and I'll bring a plate of brownies or something. Okay. I think that's, I think that's the right thing to do. Yeah. Thanks, I, Will. I, don't think, I don't think, I can't remember. Did we, did we give Buster some kind of a gift? I can't Yes, remember. we have to give him something. That's what I was wondering, whether we gave Buster anything. Maybe Sarah. Did. Was Sarah Her? working for yeah, I was here. Yes, we had a, a small uh, gathering for uh, Buster. Did we do anything for Paul? No. Remember, Paul quit. He didn't retire. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Just kidding, Paul. We could have done something. Wow. Yeah. 
I know. Yeah, so I think we were supposed something. to just get you on. Where I think the planning commission was supposed. They thought they were supposed to speak at five thirty. They've right? already done it. They've already done it. Yes. Yes, oh, they're thank done. God. That's why they're I said done. I took the notes. Oh, okay, thanks. <laughs> All right, <laughs> Nick, I can phone. get in touch on with the phone. Uh, Shane so, just to so arrange Sarah, it. So, did we, did we give Buster some kind of a gift, a check or yeah, flowers or a bottle of whiskey or anything? No, no, he couldn't, he couldn't have any, he, he couldn't have any booze. He couldn't have any sugar. Um, I think <laughs> that we just went to the, um, as I recall, we just went to the highway garage. I'm still thinking about Patty Lewis's suggestion, what we give Buster, but it's not, it's not. Uh, it's Be not nice. Safe. Be nice. It's not. It's, it's not, not fit for first. It's not time. safe for work. Um. Anyway, we you did do something. Yeah, I think the the select board did show up, and we did you know have a little something or other at at the garage. I remember it. Yeah, Liz I, was new. I just I just think it's a you know treat everyone the way we like to be treated, and I'm I'm not big. I didn't I didn't want any kind of. Uh, retirement hoodoo but they got me a little bit anyway in the end so whatever but i think we should do it make sure we don't forget okay and some cider maybe cider and brownies sure anything else what's the status on that truck victor what do truck? What, are, what are we talking here the truck that's down still oh okay so that's um the bed chain, you know, the bed chain that uh, you pull the panel up and it puts the sand out underneath the. Yep. Okay, they. Uh, and Shane got a little bit. Uh, he's he's he's. This will make you feel really good, Peter. Uh, we're going to uh, get a little bit uh, more adamant uh, about uh, maintenance and taking care of uh, the equipment. Uh, the. Uh, the, the, the covers and stuff, the chain got uh, from, from using the excavator to uh, take uh, material out of the truck and using the digging bucket instead of the cleanup bucket. And you still have to be careful. Mm -hmm. Thompson, what's so um, mm -hmm. that is down to 10 co and I, I'm not, it, it'll probably be ready next week or something, I guess. So they've had it a couple of weeks? Yeah. Jesus. I mean, you know, and, and at least we're, you know, everything starts somewhere. At least they're all on the same that we're spending too much money on maintenance. Yeah. And, and that's where the action starts. And that's where we'll try to move forward. Uh, you know, Shane is uh, aware of it and uh, he, he's, uh, he's doing a good job of, uh, of uh, uh, being more, a little more adamant about it. Good. What adamant okay. mean? What's that? What do you mean when you say he's being a little bit more adamant about it? Rather than say nothing to address it, to address the issue. And he, he's and he's he's using a little force. He's being a little forceful. He's doing a good job. Does that answer your question? Not really, but I'm I take it you think that the guys weren't cleaning up the equipment well enough and Shane's telling him to get with it and do it. That's correct. Okay, not just, good. Not just, it's not we just didn't have, experience. we didn't have, oh, Every, ahead, Peter. No, I'm just going to say it's, you know, changing the oil in a timely manner, greasing in a, you know, all the, all the maintenance stuff was kind of, a lot of it have, was a little bit on the slapdash side. Let's put it that way. Okay. Thank, thank you for, thank you, Peter. Okay. And so, um, the other thing is the uh, Shane would like to uh, um, address the buying, you know, you know, the, the new truck, because we yep. have to purchase it. And he's been in discussion with everybody uh, that uh, about a new truck and, and getting it lined up with Tenco. And uh, that's for the body and the sander and stuff. And so he, he, he will have a, he would like his presentation next select board meeting, if you could. Okay. And uh, if anybody wants to weigh in on it, you can. I, uh, that's not my forte is uh, dump trucks. It would be mine either, but it would be great to get the, it would be great to get the information before the meeting. So we have a chance to look it over, Vic. 
I okay, just kind of that will, that. I'll ask him. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll have him. I'll, I'll, I'll have him uh, get that together and send it's it. It's just to tough him. when you know we're looking at yeah. it while he's talking about yeah. it. It's tough to make sense out of it. Yeah, that's a good idea. Thank you. Yeah, and so that I did. Well said. Well, that's man. it. Well done. Yeah. Thank you. It. Yeah. Oh wait, um, how are you doing on hiring? Yeah, there's a good question. Not. Uh, we only have that one, one uh, uh, application. Uh, yeah. Well, I just received another application, but I'll discuss it in executive session. All righty. Do I get to go to that? If the board decides. Yeah, you can be invited. Okay. The answer is yes. Well, don't, don't we have to vote on that too, Peter? Yes, but we don't have to do it right now. We'll do it when we go into executive session, Mary. Okay. The motion will be to go into executive session and Sarah and Victor and they'll be invited. Dorinda. Okay. And Dorinda. And Dorinda. Always Dorinda. Don't forget Dorinda. Um, <laughs> okay. Here's, here's everybody's favorite, favorite subject. Considering waiving petitions for special articles on the 2022 town meeting that are over $250 action possible. Unfortunately, oh. unfortunately, I think we need to do the same thing we did last year. Why? Because of COVID? For the same amount. We don't require a petition. Because of COVID? Because of COVID, yeah. I don't know. I just feel like this is our new normal and we need to get with it and we need to make people do uh, a little extra work. Someone who, as someone who yeah. collected a lot of signatures on a lot of petitions, they won't even let me in the school, for Christ's sake. That's true. I'm just, I'm just school, telling you. You, know, you can stand outside the school. They won't let anybody in the school. Well, that's what I had. That's what I had to do the last time, and it was damn cold, and it wasn't a lot of fun. I'm, I mean, yeah, I'll do it. You, you guys think we should do it? That's fine. But if it were up to me, I would say, one more year, we do this. We do the same thing, and it was really appreciated when we did it last year. Are other towns considering this? I'm sure they are, but I haven't heard what they're doing. Do you know, Sarah? I don't. I've been just too freaking flat out. I'm just wondering how it got on here in the first place. Because every People organization is calling and saying, you're going to suspend this, right? You're going to suspend okay. this. And we're now kind of like, for example, we don't have the harvest dinner, correct? Right. We don't have any school. Do we have any school uh, functions, any play? No. Any, no. I mean, there are athletic games, but so the, the traditional... Christmas concert or holiday concert and harvest dinner, those aren't existing. So that's why everyone's suddenly saying we don't have the same venues we used to have to, to solicit petitions. I mean, basically, my experience always was you stand outside. We, they used to let us stand in the lobby the last time we did it, which was two years ago. We were standing out in the parking lot trying to grab people as they went to their cars, which. How many signatures? Part. Is it 70 for these two ones? How many? All right, fine. I don't care. How many are there required? Seventy-five. How many petitions are we talking? Will potentially just get themselves back on? It was probably. It was what over two fifty. There was probably I don't know fifteen of them or so, maybe. That's what I would say. I mean, last year, I think, didn't you have some sort of provision that if you had, if you would, if you level funded it from last year, right. you didn't ask for any more money um, and you had been on that and you'd been on the warning, then you didn't have to, then all you could do is, is submit a, a letter. Um, but if you wanted, if you were new and you wanted more than 250 bucks or you're changing your amount, then you'd have to go do a petition. So you can do a hybrid thing. Do you want to do that? Yes. Wait a second. You're talking. No, I think we should do. I think we should do what we did last year. If they want more money, they've got to submit a petition. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. if you, if for example, if the Kellogg Hubbard Library comes back with, I forget, is it twenty nine thousand something? If they come back with the exact same amount they had last year, what? Let's say the Waterbury Senior Center, exact same amount they had last year, um, and they had been on the warning, then yes, you could do it. But if they went to ten thousand and one dollars, they would have to get seventy five yes. signatures. Correct. You guys, or if they're to... new, they have to get signatures. And if they're great, right, yeah. and if they're new, definitely. That sounds what, great. So move. What do you do for the ones under two fifty? They just have to send what's a letter, letter correct? 
Right. They're part of that one article that you all put smushed together. They still and have to ask to be put on, right? We're not going to yeah. automatically put them on. So they have to submit a letter. Yeah, There's only okay. one you do that with, and that's the conservation fund. Okay. That's by so the I move that we do. Made what Sarah someone just made said. a motion. Liz did. Liz I'll made a motion. Is there a second? I'll second. And and Sarah, you understand what the motion is? Yeah. Is if they if you're a level fund if you're issuing if you're requesting the same amount of money you requested in 2020, you don't you can all you need is a letter to the select board. If you request where you're requesting more money or or you're new and it's over two hundred fifty dollars, you need to get seventy five signatures. Yeah. Okay. Any other the right year, twenty twenty one. Right? Comments before we vote. I'm sorry. Wait, Liz. hold on. I know I have a question. Yeah, Liz is right. Yes. Twenty twenty one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Are we ready for the vote? Yes. Who, who All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Thank you. Okay. We're still a little ahead of schedule, amazing. Considering candidates to be nominated to lister or collector of delinquent taxes until the March 22nd town meeting action possible. Sarah, is Anyone? <laughs> Zero, <Yeah>. okay. <laughs> We've considered it. <laughs> <laughs> is there um is there something that happens in statute that says like if you do not have this someone from the select board has to do it or anything like that or no how does it happen how does no, it the work select board, just, the, i you know i honestly don't know i think the select board has to hire an appraiser i'm not sure that's the same um we need to bring the listers in on this. Uh, the select board member cannot be, you can't be on, uh, you can't be a lister and I can't be a lister because I'm on the BCA and you're on the BCA. And the BCA ultimately will hear the listers, the appeals of grievances. Hmm. That is our issue. So if you know anyone who's, I mean, I've been, I've been harassing people and- um, I'll know, put it out on my Facebook page right now on our neighborhood Facebook page. Right, and so don't for, it, it pays, and there's going to be a hired assessor. So, I mean, people are. It's we really need someone to do data entry. Is it like and twenty bucks an hour? Uh, it's a little. What we've been paying right now is a lot more like twenty one, I think, or something. Except for like both that. the lister and the collector of delinquent taxes. Actually, the delinquent tax collector is higher. The delinquent tax collector, I want to say, I'd have to go look, but it's significantly it's higher. It's like twenty-seven bucks. Yeah, it's like. I'll say you make it. You make at least twenty dollars an hour, and it can be on your own schedule, right? Well, yes. there has to be. You have to be. Oh able to no no. Public. Okay. <laughs> and you don't have to have a CDL. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Okay. Well, we need to, we're holding on by the by the seat of our pants. We're okay until town meeting, but right now we have nobody after that. So well, that's we're exactly. in trouble. Well, we don't worry about it. We're gonna work on it. We yeah, we really, we really, really, really need to go out there and get your friends, talk to people that you know, spread the word. And uh, you need ethical people who are interested in fairness, who know something about real estate, who are willing to spend a few hours in the office every week. That's what you need. Did you, I thought you, you had somebody to Tuesday all talked into us, Sarah. No, no, Vic, I have not heard from her. Okay. Linda, did you talk to Linda Jackson? Did I? Yeah. I'm not gonna talk to Linda Jackson. Should we? I mean, she just lost her mother and she's going through a whole bunch of stuff right now. So it's probably not the greatest idea. Okay. But there are other people. Just think she has, she has the training and the experience. That's all I'm thinking. Yeah, I'll be hitting Sarah but Berger. She's pretty much, I think she's pretty much retired from the real estate gig, but. Yeah, she would be good. She's, I mean, she's been a lister in the past. Right. Well, I'll give her a call and talk to her. But it's part-time okay. flexible hours. Yes, yes, it's flexible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you could have another job and do this. Absolutely. Absolutely. Could you have a full-time job and do this? Depends. Probably not. <laughs> I don't know. The, the Maybe not a demanding full-time job. The problem is, is, is during the busy time of year, which is in the spring when they're trying to finalize the grand list, 
you know, it's an all hands on deck situation. So to have somebody working full time and trying to do that, I just don't think it would work. The rest of the year, potentially it could work. Like it'd be a great job for a mom who's a stay at home mom. Just so, just just to clarify, we you know, we need three listers. So you can have one lister who's a little bit more in the office doing the data entry, but when they meet with the assessor to talk about the change in value of the properties, then that then they can meet at night or in the evenings or in the weekends. They, do you see? Yes. Yeah. So that's where not all three listers have to be right there. I mean, we had a lister basically who lived in the woods and who just came out during grievance hearings for about, you know, for years. Who is that? Is that kid? <laughs> Steve's a neighbor. Oh, okay. Um, so just to be clear, we really only have to have, we absolutely have to have two listers. We don't absolutely have to have three, right? My understanding is you absolutely have to have two listers. You don't necessarily have to have three and you do have an assessor. So, I mean, that is a really, right. you have hired, signed that contract. Right. So that's Who's good. That? Who's our but, assessor? So the idea of three, it's hard for, if one disagrees and the other disagrees, you're kind of at an impasse, whereas that's why you have an odd number on the board of listers. But it's not as heavy duty as what it used to be because we are going to have this assessor. We really need someone to do data entry, and then we need people to attend grievances and supervise like a board of listers should do. Yeah, got it. Well, let's keep, let's keep, uh, let's keep pounding the, uh, pounding okay. the paper, as they say. And the delinquent tax collector, that can be done anytime. So that, that doesn't oh, need good. presence in the office. Yeah, that's actually true. That's actually better, I think, after dinner and, you know, weekends. Oh, you don't go to people's house and knock on the door? No, <laughs> no. I thought that's what it was. No. Okay, Liz, I'll knock on the door. You carry the shotgun and the saw. Yeah. <laughs> Here, you're on video. <laughs> No, but seriously, they, they what do they do? Write letters, call people. What do they? They do? have to, yeah. They call them. They write them. They send out notices every month to them to show them that you know their balance and things like that. So they make, you know, they make it, deals. They make deals for payment plans. You're right. And that's okay. an elected position. Both of the, you know, these All lister these and delinquent is elected. So people, okay. even if we find somebody and appoint them, they'll have to run in the spring. Okay. So these are elected positions. Um, and if you like the job, you could run for it in March. There you oh, go. We would, we would hope in She's accepting the position, you would agree that okay, you Okay, would... right. She's Real writing Facebook. <laughs> is this for my neighborhood? <laughs> okay, that's okay. Whatever we can do. <laughs> okay. Moving, moving right along. I have an like an I have someone who works for a life insurance company. This would be a perfect job for her on the side. They have to be what? for Middlesex. She is. She's our neighbor. Good. Perfect. Excellent. We should ask Bobby Penny too. Have you asked Bobby Penny, Sarah? No, I'm going to leave. He's got enough on his plate right now. I'm talking about his wife. Her name is Bobby. He's Rob. She's Bobby. Oh, I know her from a different last name. Okay. Broth. Yeah, but she you know, and I hate to say this. I don't want to be awful, but we would really, we're trying to get more younger people involved in the town. And sometimes yep. the people who <laughs> serve as our retired people, but you know, we've got a whole bunch of retired people serving. And when they go, that's like, okay, you know, we're, we're trying to build up a base here. Randy Drury. <laughs> hey, where's Randy? He's not here tonight. He was on He's earlier, here. but his daughter had a game. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Moving right along, approving the minutes of the 921-21 and 923-21 select board meetings. Action likely. Is there a motion? Well, well, hold approved. on. The 923-2021 only uh, the Liz and Mary cannot vote on that one. Okay, sorry. I'll move 9-9. You'll move from 921? Where was no. I? I don't know. That's the Thursday one, and I forgot about it. I'll oh, I didn't go. I'll move nine nine and nine twenty one. No. No nine twenty one. No. Nine twenty one. Nine. Nine twenty one. 
Come on, guys. <laughs> 921 is the meeting when I think we were all there, the regular meeting. Yes. Okay, I thought 923 you said 9-9. was the short, quickie meeting where we only had three of okay, us. Okay, sorry. I thought that 99 was on there as well. Oh. No. Nope. I'll move 921. Okay, so second. second to 921. Second. Okay, seconded by Steve. All in favor of approving the 921 minutes, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, we've approved that. Now, the 923 minutes. I'll make a motion to approve the 923 select board minutes. I'll second. And Phil will second, thank you. Okay, all I'll in favor? Aye. 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 And Mary, you're abstaining and Liz is abstaining, correct? Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, correspondence, Sarah. You don't have three, do you? Hmm? Oh, he is. Yeah, Sarah. Uh, uh, I do not have any correspondence. Just hate mail. Oh, that's <laughs> not true. It's not. Um, true. I do have a question though uh, for other matters that come before the board regarding our. Okay, well, let's just let's just. We we've already talked about the orders. We have no correspondence now. We're on other matters. Go ahead, Liz. Uh, so Phil, I just want to say that um, I talked with um. Holland. Yeah. And I, I just wanted to say, and I'm not sure, Mary, you're aware of this. I think we both have our emails. Actually, I'm not sure if yours is set up the same way. Holland had trouble doing what we needed him to do. And so what we ended up doing was just having the um, emails get forwarded to my Gmail. The problem, and they come, there's no problem. They, they totally show yeah. up in my Gmail. The problem is when I respond, I respond from my home email. So I've gotten around it by just using a bookmark on my computer and um, and going, if I want to write an email, I write from the town of Middlesex's rack space. Okay. So I just would say, Mary, you should check to see where your emails are actually coming from when you respond. If he set it up in a way that it shows as mary.skinner at middlesexvermont.org or is it coming from your G regular gmail account which is well, problematic i mean i've been come i've been checking that quite a bit they all come in on one server so i get all my emails but if i think it's from the town i can actually go to that site i can pull it out and then i can respond to it so it's already set up so i can respond okay and it's so responding I your, I from your new email. Worry about yours. Yeah. Yeah. So mine is not. So I just have to be careful, is what it boils down to. Yeah. I, mean, years really, I, I wonder about this whole thing. And I, you know, is by is by having these things forwarded to your Gmail account if you're opening up your Gmail account to potential. Mm -hmm. I think I you are, but, but that's yeah. up to you guys. Yeah. And the other thing, like Sandy is sending yeah, it to the. If everybody wants to see anything in my Gmail account. They're more than welcome. But right. Right. I would tell you, you'd mostly find it pretty damn boring. Um, okay. <laughs> Can't wait to look, Peter. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, come on over, Mary. I'll get it up for you. You can spend your afternoon. <laughs> I but would guys, never to figure it out. <laughs> guys, you might find a few. You might find a few pictures of your grandchildren in there. You'd like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would. <laughs> Okay. okay. I'm not so, done. Can I maybe, just finish? Okay, go ahead. I, I'm also thinking that I don't believe people like Sandy and Mitch and whoever are using our Middlesex Vermont emails. Like I got my email from Sandy, mm -hmm. but I'm pretty sure it came to my home. So I'm Sandy not sure if we need is. to. Mm -hmm. Sandy, Sandy usually uses the planning commission one. No, well, I'm I, just saying to me. Oh, I see. But at one time yeah, we told Sandy's everybody used, the planning commission has one. Yeah. Has what? Sandy. Planning commission has one email. Right. It's not them. I'm saying. <laughs> I'm saying when they're sending us an email. And well, I think I that's part of confusion. I think at one time we told everybody not to send anything to the new one because nobody was able to retrieve it. And I don't know if these outside boards have been told to start using those emails again or not. 
I don't think they have been, Dorinda. I think I think the, my memory is the way we left it was we were going to try and get ourselves squared away first, which I think largely we have finally. So now I think we need to let the I hate to call it everyone, buyers, but the others know yeah. that they need to be using the town email. The the planning commission had their group email changed to a distribution list. Yes, yeah, I see that. So everybody gets it. And if you respond back, everybody gets it. The planning commission has an individual email. Um, and I believe, and as far as I know, um, that is being used. Cause anything that I've gotten from Sandy is always um, on that email. Um, individual members don't have emails for that um they, so they have transitioned over and i i don't think there's any other group other than us and dorinda and sarah dorinda's nodding her head yes i think that's well victor has one. Oh, and victor victor uses his yeah yeah, Victor speak, uses this. Sandy? Sandy. Yeah, it would be helpful if you could circulate what the, the town emails are for everybody. I don't think I've ever seen them. I'm the only one with the planning commission email, and I've asked other planning commission members when they do any official work to copy the planning commission yeah. Middlesex email on their email so that it so that if anybody ever does a public records request, all the planning commission emails are available. Right. So have we changed changed our emails on the town? Yeah, website? we can send something out. Yeah, I've changed it. They've, I, I think I have. Okay, thank you. I will check tomorrow. Okay, okay. All right, so we need a motion to go into executive session. And Wait, we hold on. Include... You're gonna, you're, you're, you're good, you're, making a motion to go into executive session under one VSA section 31381 section 7A. In other words, this is entering into um, a discussion about contracts when and only when uh, premature general public knowledge would clearly place the public body or the person involved at a substantial disadvantage. In this case would make these people at substantial disadvantage if this were public because they still have jobs elsewhere. Oh, so this is a personnel that. issue. Right. Yes, so but it's moves. just to be clear that you can't always go into executive session for personnel issues. In this case, we're going into executive session yeah. because there would be a substantial disadvantage to the people we are gonna discuss. Yeah. So I'll move that. Mary I'll move? move Who seconded? Yeah. Second. Okay. And now you have to also include people who you want in the executive session. I'll move it to include Dorinda. Um, our uh, assistant clerk, Sarah, um, who else? Vic. Vic. Oh, Vic Dwyer, our road commissioner. Um, can I just say one thing, Sarah? I'm going yeah. to switch to my phone. So I'm gonna ask to come in again. Okay, that's fine. I'm uh, just gonna, as soon as you guys pass the motion, I'm gonna stop the recording. I may have to get rid of my video because I have a very small amount left because I didn't have my car on. Okay. And I, anyway. Okay. All in, all in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. We are in executive.